from the book of St. Luke chapter 12, verse 23 and verses 29 through 32, Philippians 4.19 and the third epistle of John and the second verse. From St. Luke chapter 12, beginning at the 23rd verse, the life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Verse 29 through 32, and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind, for all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen. Philippians 4, 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The third epistle of John, the second verse, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Amen. Let us reason together for a few moments from this subject, Purpose Driven Prosperity. Will you repeat that after me? Purpose Driven Prosperity. Thank you. You may be seated. What a blessing it is to know how much God wants us to thrive, to flourish, to abound. He wants us to be blessed because we are his children. I don't know of any parent that doesn't want to see their children make it. In fact, you will sacrifice whatever you are and whatever you have just so that your children can get ahead. Many of us know that in order for us to advance our education, to be successful even with our careers, somebody had to believe in us and invest themselves into us. Not just their resources, not just their money, but they had to put their time, their lives to the point of seeing to it that we would be successful. God is the mother and father of us all. And I know that some people are not exactly comfortable with looking at God as mother and father, but he'll be to you what you let him be. We've said for many years, he's a mother for the motherless and a father for the fatherless. He will protect you and provide for you like a father. And then he will nurture you and hug you and love you like a mother. I'm glad he's big enough, God, to be mother and father. Even Sister Sonia McGuire said, he's everything to me. And sometimes you need God to be a nurturing presence. Sometimes you need God to simply be the one that provides a shoulder for you to lean and cry upon. Sometimes you need for God to just put his arms around you and comfort you and love you. That's what we find in God. I recognize that 
We have to deal with the fact that we have come up in what might be a rather chauvinistic setting. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us to level the playing field. Amen, amen, amen. And I think that's what's rich about the Word of God, that yes. when the Spirit of God gives you grace to rightly divide the Word of truth, you learn how to minister to people wherever they are and from whatever area of life they come from. God said, all souls are mine. There's nobody that God doesn't claim, nobody that God doesn't love. There's not one person that Jesus didn't die for, past, present, or future. There's nobody that God doesn't put angels around your bedside. There's no one that God doesn't give you new mercies, compassions every morning. Whether you thank him or not, he's there. Whether you acknowledge him or not, he's blessing you. Whether you praise him or not, he's still pouring out his blessings on the just and the unjust, the good, the bad, the ugly. God loves everybody. And so when we observe how much God wants us to be blessed, it's encouraging to look into our spiritual bank accounts and see the deposit that Jesus has already made. Now I know the song says that God has a blessing with your name on it, and I believe that, but I also believe that in order to access that blessing, you've got to use his name before you get to your name. Because Jesus is the family name. Ephesians chapter 3 reminds us of that. Of him is the whole family name in heaven and in earth. And since Jesus is the family name, you can't even talk to the Father unless you use the family name, Jesus. In fact, you can't even talk to the devil unless you use the family name, Jesus. In my name shall they cast out devils. In my name they lay hands on the sick. In my name, they speak with new tongues. The family name is Jesus. And whenever you pray, you've got to acknowledge what your family name is. Don't ever pray a prayer and sign it with your name. Because the name Jesus is above every name. And at the name of Jesus. Us. Every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. When you realize how much family wealth you have in your family name, then you began to access God's riches. In fact, most people who are wealthy had some family to go along with it. That's why it is so necessary to understand God's purpose for families. He didn't mean for families to fight and struggle and hate and divide. I know you like watching that game show, Family Feud. In fact, that's the way some families live, is by feuding. They fight all the time, fight over nothing, fight over things that are insignificant. That's not God's will for your family, is that all you do is fight. You need to submit yourself to God's purpose and will. Or as Jesus says, if you want these blessings, seek first the kingdom of God. Matthew says, and his righteousness or living in balanced right relationships. And when your relationships are right, then blessings just flow into your life. Amen. Amen. Yes, we need to talk about prosperity because other people are talking about it. 
Why should we resign from our position of being divinely appointed by God to share God's purpose and will for the lives of his people while others are the only one talking about money? The casinos are talking about it. The boats are talking about it. Even uh, online betting is talking about it. Uh, a few days ago when we went to be with the Commonwealth jurisdiction for their convocation, uh, it so happened that the casino bought out the hotel where they hold the conversation and then shut the door that led to the convocation. So even the saints on their way to the Commonwealth Convocation to hear Bishop Sheard preach had to walk right past. Yeah. You might be saved, but before you get to your service, you're going to see these machines. And we're going to invite you to play the machines. And I want you to understand that's the way the world does business. They want you to think that money is first, that it is primary. They want you to think you better look out for number one. They want you to be driven by greed, by materialism, by hedonism, by pleasure. They want you to look at a commercial and before it ends, they want you to start ordering Put your phone on that QR code. Call now. Order now. And if you call within the next 30 seconds, we'll even add a bonus to your order. You've got to understand that you live in a world that is driven by this kind of marketing, greed, this addiction to things. But things will never satisfy your soul. Things will never put you in proper balance. That's why some people are dealing with mental illness now because they trust in things. They'd rather have things than people. Most relationships uh, go bad because of things. Even when people go to court, they are fighting about this is mine and I want mine first. Even as children, if somebody picked up our toy, we had to let them know, that's mine. Well, God has to completely rewire you. He has to completely reprogram you to understand who you are in his kingdom. Amen. And when you know who you are in God, you don't have to worry about what's mine because Jesus helps us to understand you're going to get everything that I am and everything that I have. Amen. That is why Jesus loves us with a genuine agape love. You know, sometimes we refer to other members of the family through marriage as brother in love or sister in love or mother in love rather than in law. Because if you stay in love, you won't have to call the lawyers. Jesus loves us with genuine agape love. Amen. And before you even realize it, he's already investing himself in you. He's investing the kingdom into you. Look at God investing goodness and mercy that chases after you all the days of your life. You yeah. were blessed before you even knew you were blessed. Yeah. You were blessed while God was secretly making you in the womb. You were blessed when God God was breathing his breath into your nostrils. You were blessed even as a child. Whatever kind of environment you were in, somehow God wouldn't let it destroy you. God wouldn't let it maim you or completely make you dysfunctional. He brought you through poverty. He brought you through rejection. Some of us, he brought through divorce. Some of us, he brought from the streets and from homelessness. God wants you prosper and even when the world tries to take your identity and take your drive, your vision your passion, God says the thief only comes to steal, to kill and to destroy which means I've got to show up after the thief has gotten to you, the systemic racism thief the thief of peers that don't want you to make it, the thief of self-doubt, the thief of confusion, the thief of depression and discouragement. I'm going to show up after the thief has 
that's trying to wipe you out, to kill you, and to destroy you. And then I'm going to prepare a table before you right in front of the folk that tried to shut you down. I'm glad God wants you to prosper. Somebody ought to help me give God some praise this morning. It is no accident that you are prospering. Amen. I think we ought to make that clarification every now and then. We are no accident and you are not blessed by accident. God Amen. intentionally worked a miracle in your life. He didn't heal you accidentally. He intentionally rebuked death from your body. He intentionally cast demons off you. He intentionally rebuked generational curses. Yeah. That's why I'm glad Dr. Rich Newell is here this morning because we need to talk about the fact that because of the disintegration of our family, because of systemic racism, because of a culture that never meant for me to go to school in the first place, because of a system that was never designed for me to even go to school to learn, to get ahead, I was supposed to remain three-fifths of a person. And that's why some folk can't stand it that an African-American woman is about to kick the glass ceiling out of place and become the first to be elected as president because you didn't want me to make it. I came from the slave galleys. I came from the auction block. I came from family that you split up. All of us didn't split up because we didn't have it going on. The system sold us as husbands away from wives, as parents away from children. We were supposed to have been brought here to make this country rich and then like a Kleenex be thrown away. That is the reason why we refer to as some politicians as America's problem. I want you to know you ain't throwing me away. I ain't no Kleenex and you ain't gonna never get rid of me. I'll show up in the Senate. I'll show up on the Supreme Court. I'll show up in the White House. I'll show up in the governor's mansion. If God be for us, who can be against? Come on, help me give God some praise today. And so, you understand, you have to be assertive about who God has called you to be. You have to be proactive in your praise. That is why these words ring true. The Bible gives us a Judeo-Christian trajectory of God blessing us, enfranchising us, establishing us. Obviously, he wants us to be blessed when the number one hit psalm in the book of Psalms, Psalm 1, blessed is the man or woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but your delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law you meditate day and night, and because your heart and mind and emotions are in the right place, you shall be like a tree that brings forth your fruit in your season, your leaves shall not wither, which means even when you get old, you're going to still be looking good, you're going to be rocking it for years, because he renew your youth like the eagles. Come on, help me give God some praise. That's the kind of God he wants you to prosper, to take the gate of your enemies. Like Jabez said, oh, I want you to bless me indeed. I want you to enlarge my coast. I even want you to give me the gate of my enemies, the folk that's been digging deep from it. The folk that put a system in place where I'm supposed to be the last hired and the first fired. I want you to give me the grace, the training, the patience to be an employer and not just an employee. To be an entrepreneur, a dreamer, a visionary. God has invested himself into your life. And that's why you gotta do things that help you to prosper. You may not be able to say man to that, just say hmm. That means you can't drink all the man's liquor. You can't smoke all the man's weed. You can't intake all the man's poison. You already talking about black power and you using white cocaine. You must be out of your mind. Amen to that. That's right. You want to prosper. You got to have a right relationship.
relationship with God, you got to have people skills. You want folk to come to your business, you want them to patronize you, support you, and you act like they doing you a favor to show up? No, you have to have people. Let me hear somebody say people skills. That means you got to know how to smile when you feel like crying. You better look happy even if you ain't happy. Claim it until you get it. You better praise him until your cup runs over. Even if you feel bad, trust him until he gives you enough grace to overcome your affliction. Many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord delivered out of them all. You got to practice that in church. You don't come to church and look like you've been eating bitter apples. I know some folk believe holiness is a long face. That's a Sadducee religion. In the Bible, Sadducees were always sad, you see. Well, being deep ain't about sitting in the corner with a long face. He told you to make a jaw for noise unto the Lord. He told you to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. He told you to clap your hands, all your people. Shake that deep stuff and give God some glow. Come on, help me praise in this morning. Yes, God wants you to prosper. Come on and help me with this. Touch somebody and tell them God wants you to prosper. And not only that, tell them, and I want you to prosper. Yes, you got to want the prosperity of others. That means you have to pray one for another. You have to forgive one another. You have to forbear one another. That means you got to put up with some stuff. I think I need to stay there for a minute because everybody ain't made it yet. And you got to know how to be patient and put up with folk that haven't quite arrived. Everybody come to church, doesn't know how to put it all on the altar. They think they're supposed to take it out on you. And that's why you got to have enough grace to be long suffering. You can't say everything you think. You can't say everything you feel. Sometimes you got to have shut mouth grace. You remember that? Hold your peace and let God fight you. Won't God fight your battle? Won't God open doors for you? Won't God make a way for Come on, help me give him some praise. Yes, Jesus teaches us about real prosperity. Yes, we will love to look our best, to drive our best to wear, our best, but every now and then you ought to look at your counterparts. Uh, you know, African-American pastors, it is said, have a different image projection. In fact, one of the greatest targets of comedy is the African-American church and the African-American pastor. Yeah. Even Flip Wilson made fun of the African-American church yeah. and the African-American pastor because we are the standard in our community. It is no accident that the senator comes here, the governor comes here, the President of the United States comes here because we are the standard in our community. But let us not become wrapped up in image projection. You understand, Jesus is the one who broke that mold. There are pastors of mega churches in other communities who do not have or even drive Bentleys or Rolls Royces because they know how to deal with image projection. Many of them wear khaki pants and run over shoes. And their congregation calls them Pastor Bob and Pastor Bill. And yet we get wrapped up in titles. You got to call me bishop or doctor, but I'm glad Jesus taught us how to be a servant leader. So don't get your feelings hurt when somebody calls you 
servant said. Because you need to know how to prosper if you humble yourself. In due time, God will promote you, honor you, elevate you. But if your head is too big for your own body, then you can't stand to be blessed. If you get bent out of shape every time you're talked about, you can't stand to be blessed. If you can't take it when trouble knocks at your door, then you can't stand to be blessed. Why don't you help me with Luke? Look at somebody and ask them, can you stand to be blessed? God wants to give you something, but what he wants to give you some, you got to grow into it. You know, when I was growing up, my parents didn't buy me clothes that fit me. too fast. I'm not going to buy you a pair of shoes that fit you because next week you need another pair of shoes. I'm going to get you some shoes that are a little too large. Then I'm going to put some paper in the toe of the shoes and when you grow in a couple of weeks, I'm going to take the paper out. I ain't buying new shoes every other week. Sometimes God gives you some things a little too big for you. He gives you a role too big for you, a calling too big for you, because it's not a man-sized job. It's not a woman-sized job. It's a God-sized job. And you got to grow in God, grow in grace, grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Your calling might be too big for you, but if you seek the Lord, if you stay in his word, you'll grow into it. Your mission might be too big for you, but if you stay on your knees, you'll grow into it. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every round goes higher and higher. You gotta grow into your ministry, grow the job that God gives you is a little too big for you now. But because you're growing in a little while, you need to get something bigger than that. In a little while, he's going to promote you and take you to a place you never dreamed possible before. Because he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. The question is, how big are you thinking? Before you start asking big, start thinking big. And if you can think big, remember, think has a relative called thank. Thinking and thanking go together. And what God has joined together, let no one put asunder. If you think how big God is, think how great God is, think how awesome God is, then you start giving him awesome thanks, awesome worship, awesome praise, awesome devotion. Oh Lord, my God, how great thou art. The stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. And when I think of how awesome you are, how you made the mountains, how you made the stars, how you made the air for me to breathe, how you put angels by my bedside, how you give me new mercies, compassions, and loving kindness, then before I know it, something wakes up inside of me, then sings my soul. just look up toward heaven and say how great thou art. God is so great. He keeps on doing great things for you. So great. Keeps making ways for you. So great. Keeps expanding your imagination. Growing your faith. Growing your maturity. Making you steadfast. Yes. 
listen. Help me say, I know my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory. Come on and thank him for it in advance. Thank you for meeting my needs. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you for healing my spirit. Heal my emotions. Heal my idiosyncrasies. Heal my past. Heal my failures. Save me from my sins. If you heal me on the inside, I'll be healed on the outside. If you save me on the inside, I can praise you on the outside. Something on the inside. Let us give God thanks. Eternal God, our Father, we bless you for this opportunity to reach souls around the world. May you continue to bind us closer together in the love of Jesus Christ. As your word says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. May the power of the Holy Spirit move upon our lives that we may fulfill our kingdom assignment. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.